This episode of Android Weekly is brought to you by Domain.com. So let's talk about wearables beyond the watch in the near future. I'm talking the next two to three years. Will we have smart clothing, smart contact lenses, or are we just going to go all Borg and start injecting ourselves? I am Locutus, a Borg. Resistance is futile. Ever since wearable technology burst onto the scene, the landscape has been dominated by wrist-worn devices. We've had wave after wave of fitness trackers, and the smartwatch category is finally getting competitive. But the term wearable covers a whole lot more than our wrists, and we're not talking just about smart glasses either. Finding ways to weave small electronic sensors into clothing could enable t-shirts or jackets to perform the same sort of functions that fitness trackers and smartwatches are handling right now. It could also lead to new methods of control. Imagine tapping your armchair to change the channel, sweeping your sleeve to take a call, or even crossing your legs to pause the music you're listening to. Uh, okay, that last sentence was written by Simon Hill and that was just weird. Can you imagine? I don't think it has a leg to stand on. Google's ATAP, Advanced Technology and Projects Division, showed off Project Jackward at I.O. this past year, with the aim of bringing touch-sensitive clothing to the mainstream. The demo revealed how it might work. It's a highly conductive yarn that can be weaved into clothing or any other material. It can create gesture-sensitive areas that could be invisible in the finished garment, but it requires embedded electronics to work. The idea here is to miniaturize these to button size, and then they'll link up to clothing to your smartphone or any other device wirelessly, via Bluetooth at least at the moment. The smart move here on Google's part is to go directly to fashion brands with the technology, and work with them on delivering it in garments. One of the major problems for wearables so far has been that tech companies don't necessarily know how to make something that people want to wear from an aesthetic point of view. Apparently, Levi is already on board, and that's the kind of brand that could give something like this a big push into the market. The yarn is apparently washable, and there's no issue making the electronics waterproof, but does not make sense to have a complete set of electronics in each item of clothing? What would be the added cost? What would happen with repairs? Can it be recycled? It may make more sense for fabric to be part of the clothing, but the electronics to be a separate component that's plugged in when needed. These are all issues that have to be resolved. Google also showed off Project Soli at I.O., which is a way for our wearables to track micro gestures. It could empower us to make tiny hand gestures to activate features. It uses radar to track our hand movements, so you could perhaps make a gesture like turning a volume dial down in the air and actually turn down the volume. Now at the moment, all these wearables are limited in scope. The expense for a single item of clothing that has limited capabilities is definitely off-putting. But perhaps if we reach a platform standardization for wearable clothing, we'll really see some movement. If Google can get fashion designers interested using Jackward and get developers interested in creating apps for it, then it could be uniquely well-placed to drive a whole new ecosystem. But the next question is, who would actually buy this stuff? There are some clever ideas for how wearables might improve the life for people suffering from various conditions. Google smart lenses for diabetics are a particular interesting example. For sports pros, the fitness tracking wearables offer some benefits in terms of comfort and accuracy over existing technology. They're sure to serve a niche demand, but do the rest of us really need this kind of technology? There are still questions about how you'd care for a smart garment how to power it, or even how safe it would be. The potential is very exciting, but that's all it is for the moment. So what do you guys think will be the next leap forward in the world of wearables? I gotta point out some recent history. When you're looking at uh, you know, a great leap forward in innovation, let's talk about the first real smartphone, like the iPhone. Now there were smartphones before that, but they sucked. When the first iPhone came out, it was really, really limited in features. It didn't even have an app store or an app ecosystem to speak of. There was just a few native apps directly from Apple. It was so limited in features, but because those core, uh, core functions were so strong, it really took off and created a whole new category. Someone is going to do that in the wearables market, and it needs to be something that is subtle, unobtrusive, and does one or two things really, really well. What do you think it's gonna be? So a lot of you gave me great critical feedback on my own site, undividedcompany.com. That's the work that I do when I'm not doing this work here. 
and I spent a lot of time considering whether or not to get a .org or a .ca. A lot of companies here in Canada use .ca to tell their customers that they are a Canadian company, but I chose the .com and that matters for business reasons quite a bit. Why? Because no domain name extension tells your story with the same level of trust as a .com or .net domain name. .com and .net domain name extensions inject credibility into your online presence. And who doesn't want more credibility? You can save 15% on domain name and web hostings when you use our coupon code ANDROID at domain.com checkout. Don't forget, 15% off when you use our coupon code ANDROID. When you think domain names, think domain.com. Thanks for watching, Edward Army. My name is Jace. Love to connect with you right here on Google Plus or Twitter. And I did want to prove that I do read all the comments because I guess one or two times in each show, someone comments about my voice. My voice sounding creepy, among other things, but that's a whole other show. Uh, and they think that I'm putting on a creepy voice, but this is my voice. This is honestly how I sound both on camera and off and it's my normal voice. I've never heard someone say before that my voice sounds creepy, but apparently to some of you it does. So I just wanted to you know, answer that comment that comes uh, once or twice every show. You don't want to forget about my brothers in Android who are working hard to be your source for all things Android. I shall see you later this week on Android Weekly.